What the last 10 months has proved is that we can all be quite productive and innovative working remotely using the digital tools that are available today. Welcome to the Payroll Podcast with your host, Nick Day. Find out what it takes to truly discover what it takes to elevate your career within payroll as we meet with the industry leaders who are shaping the industry for tomorrow. Hello to all of you lovely payroll listeners from across the globe. Today, I have a cracking guest to bring to you on the Payroll Podcast. My name, of course, is Nick Day. I'm CEO of JJ Recruitment, a specialist payroll recruitment firm. And I'm also the host of this payroll podcast, which, of course, you can find on iTunes, Spotify, and on our very own website, jjrecruitment.com, as well as across all other major global podcast channels. So let me tell you about my guest today as I am joined by David Ossip, who's chairman and CEO of Ceridian HCM Holdings. Now, Ceridian's brand promise, which is makes work life better, is a promise to deliver innovative technology that helps companies better engage and manage their employees. And we're going to be finding out a lot more about that during the course of this podcast. Now, David is a transformational technology leader. He's a serial entrepreneur with more than 30 years of experience in building and leading successful human capital management or HCM technology companies. And he's also the driving force behind the innovation, the vision and leadership at Ceridian, which has grown to become a global HCM company committed to delivering quantifiable value to its customers and great experience experience for their employees. In fact, Dayforce, Ceridian's intelligent HCM platform, has grown to an annual compounded rate of more than 50% since 2012. Now, David, who's joining me today, holds an MBA from Harvard Business School, and he's been the recipient of many awards for his leadership, including the Ernst & Young Award for Entrepreneur of the Year, the Ernst & Young National Special Citation for Technology Innovation, Canada's top 40 under 40, the Waterstone Human Capital's most admired CEO for transformational leadership. David, it's an honour to welcome you today to the Payroll Podcast. Hey Nick, uh, a pleasure to be here and thank you for that delightful uh, introduction. I would like to start, if I may, by discussing the, the seismic shift we're really witnessing in the world of work at the moment and, and where you see it going over the next few years. What really has happened over the last, I suppose, almost uh, nine, ten months is we've seen, I would think, a decade of digital acceleration across the workplace. And I think what the last ten months has proved is that we can all be quite productive and innovative working remotely using the digital tools that are available today. Okay. You've noted how the use of intelligent tools, you mentioned and the modern technology by companies is clearly going to be key for growth in the future as well. So, so while technology has been, been changing the way we work for some time, payroll seems to be the one area that hasn't really seen the same scale of innovation. You know, with that in mind, really, what does the future of payroll look like from, from your perspective globally on one side, but also in the UK on the other? So, uh, Nick, maybe for that I could rewind a bit and let me just... Uh talk about kind of my journey for almost the last 10 years. Fabulous. Please do. So in um, 2009, uh, my uh, non-compete from a prior business had expired. And my background historically has been on the workforce management side, which is the uh, scheduling or rostering of people, uh, tracking when they arrive for work, leave for work, calculating something called their gross pay. And um, in 2009, I decided to re-enter the marketplace, but I wanted to also extend the uh, system and the the space next to workforce management is, as you know, payroll. And so I started to do a lot of analyzing of how payroll processes worked. And what I determined at that point in time was that the basic workflow that was used for tracking time and paying people seemed to be disjointed in that all of the incumbents in the space had separation of data and systems across HR, payroll, and time in attendance. 
And what that meant from a practical point of time is that the data resided in the time system for the entire duration of the payroll period, which is usually a month or a biweekly basis. And only at the end of that payroll cycle would you export the data and then import it into the pay system. If you were a payroll person, that meant that you could not start your busy work. And busy work, I mean validating the data, running different types of audit reports, entering adjustments and such, until you had that time data, which came in typically a day after the end of the pay cycle. And that meant that the payroll processes were very rushed. And often the payroll people would commit their pay, transfer the monies before they had completed the checks. And the solution for that was why not build pay and time together in a single system so that if you change an HR record or a time record, you would recalculate the net earnings immediately. So you would always have an up-to-date pay slip for every employee during the active pay period. Payroll people then obviously could log on at any time from the start of the pay period, run the QA reports, enter the adjustments and such, and be ready to pay people accurately at the end of the pay period. Now, once we noticed that and we saw the opportunity, we started to question the concept of a pay period. And The pay period really is an artifact of 1940s computing, which were those old IBM machines that had to do everything in batches. In today's world with today's technology, there's no need to have this archaic construct of a pay period. We know that if someone works a day, at the end of the day, that money is owed to them by the company. And in fact, if they leave the organization, you typically have to pay the person as they leave the organization. We also know in every other aspect of our life, whether it be the way that we watch uh, a TV show, say on Netflix, we, we no longer have the patience to wait for an episode every week. Instead, we log on, we look for a series that might have three, four, five seasons, and we binge watch it all together. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. In, when, when it comes to purchasing, we go to Amazon and we kind of check that button that says Amazon Prime, which gives me delivery same day or next day. Anything that doesn't have same day delivery or next day delivery, we don't look at anymore. So the question that we have to ask is why are people still paid in arrears when there's no technical reason for them? You can do the calculations so you can have a continuous always on pay slip. And you could uh, quite honestly allow people to get paid at the end of each day. So when you ask the question where I see the future of payroll is I, I, I do believe in a few years time, organizations will move to paying people whenever they want to be paid based on the money that is already owed to them. Sure. Well, that's a, a, a great story to get to that point. I fully understand it. I was fortunate enough that we had the opportunity to, to, to talk together, David, on the future of payroll on a recent virtual conference. And something that I took away from that was a much better understanding of how modern payroll practices can help improve financial wellness. And you talked a lot about something called the Day Force Wallet. It's something I wasn't familiar with at the time. There has been a lot of conversation in the payroll community about pay-on-demand services. So I'd love to take the opportunity to ask you, if I may, to tell me more about what Day Force Wallet is, how it works, and in particular, the benefits you see it having for both the employee and the employer. Sure. So let me go back again. So As I mentioned, when we built the day four system, the way that we saw that we could disrupt the payroll industry and the human capital management industry was building this single application with one database and one rule engine so that you would have continuous payroll calculations and an always on payslip. And it's been very successful. Um, We've uh, taken live uh, almost 5,000 customers globally over the last about eight years since we launched the the product. And as you mentioned, uh, the compound and annual growth rate on the product has been superb, about 50% during that period of time. 
When we looked at building it, we didn't say we're only going to build a always on pay slip. We always saw the opportunity to deliver a, a, a sizable benefit to employees by allowing them to access their owed monies immediately. And the reason that we saw that as an opportunity was that research showed that about 80%, that's 80, of all workers, regardless if they are salaried workers, hourly workers, contract workers, struggle to make ends meet between pay cycles. And they oscillate between being cash rich when they get their pay slip and their, their, their check, and then they uh, go to very much cash poor in the middle of the pay cycle. And the way that many people make ends meet is that they rely on credit card debt or payday loans. And some of those have annualized interest rates of around 400% per year. So very, very expensive for people to bridge the financing. And the way that you could solve that quite easily is by having this ability that if I work a day or a week or a shift, the ability to see how much I'm owed and to immediately say, I'd like to access that money. We started building this about a year ago, and we launched the Dayforce wallet in the United States at the very beginning of May this year. And we've seen a remarkable uptake of the product over the last few months. We're seeing a very high attachment rate for all new clients coming on board, and we're seeing that the requirement for on-demand pay is becoming a base requirement in the selection of systems. And if you do some web searches, you'll see that clients that have implemented it are now talking about it on their career websites. And you'll see job postings where they talk about the benefit to candidates of being able to join a company where they can get paid on a daily basis. Yeah, I mean, it makes total sense to me as a recruiter. I think anything you can introduce that improves the employee experience and the retention of your top talent has to be seen as a positive shift. But I know that you know there is some resistance in the market. There's always going to be some resistance to change. And I think we've probably seen a little bit of that. Is it, I know that in the US, uh, certainly when I was out there, that they're a little bit um, more familiar with things like pay cards than perhaps we are in the UK. So are there any particular challenges of implementing this solution, bearing in mind UK legislation, or is it, is it actually a very, very straightforward thing to implement? So that's a great question. So I first discussed on-demand pay at our customer conference in 2018. And when I mentioned it, and we had thousands of people inside the room, you could have dropped a pin. There was this <laughs> audible gasp of all the payroll people inside the room saying, wait, how's my life going to change? I can't run payroll every day of the month type of thing. Yet when we go forward, what we've really found is that the demand for on-demand pay is coming from the employees themselves. Yeah. The uh, employees today know that they can get paid and they can work for organizations that do pay them uh, if they wish daily. And it's no different than a consumer, say, looking at Netflix versus looking at the traditional video uh, uh, store. We used to go rent the uh, VHS tape type of thing. So the, the market's shifting very quickly, largely because of the rise of the worker and the focus of organizations to really build up on the employee experience. Now, we, we all know that if we get the employee experience correct, the translation of that customer experience, and that obviously leads to referenceability and leads to growth and sales. Now, when we built the Dayforce wallet, we knew the sensitivity around the payroll people. And so we had a few basic requirements. The first was we did not want to change the way that payroll people closed out the pay period. So we built the system so that if you're on a monthly payroll, bi-weekly payroll, you still run your payroll on a monthly or bi-weekly basis. There's no difference to the closeout of pay or the reports that you run. All that you have now is that it shows you the on-demand pays that happen during that pay cycle. 
The second requirement was that we had to do it compliantly. Now, when we talk about HDM and payroll, we all know that it's a very complex environment and it's a very dynamic environment. And this COVID period has shown us how dynamic it can really be, where uh, different jurisdictional governments can really change the way that they levy taxes almost overnight. So we built the system to be fully compliant, which means when a employee says, I'd like to get paid, we run a true peril for that person, which means we generate a pay slip for that individual transaction. And we do the movement of the funds and we do the necessary reporting at the jurisdictional level. And we can do that in the UK and we can do that obviously in the United States and in Canada as well. So it is definitely solvable. It's not obviously a very easy thing to do, but as you know, our strength in marketplace is having the strongest product for payroll compliance in market. And so that the continuous calculation engine allows us to address that very, very nicely. Um, now, if you're an organization in the United States, there are some benefits as well. If you pay people weekly or biweekly, you can actually move to a monthly payroll cycle. And that would make it easier in terms of busy work that you have to do on a monthly basis. And in the United States, there is um, the interchange that's available. Interchange is when you make a purchase. Uh, a certain amount of the purchase goes into the uh, card network. And in the United States, it's about 125 basis points or 1.25%. And that 1.25% funds the entire process, which means in the United States, we're able to offer it uh, to the customers without charging a software fee, with no direct fees to the employees. So when they load money onto their card, we don't charge anything. And as well, we can act as a commercial lender to the employer such that we loan the money to the company. The company then uses those funds to actually pay the person. So there's no funding changes to the way that they actually fund payroll. Sure. I think it's really interesting. I think for me, I mean, I've talked about retention being a key element. That's something that I see. Obviously, I want to sell, you know, when I'm selling an opportunity to a payroll candidate for a new payroll position, it's going to be an easier sell for me knowing that they, you know, a company is offering this kind of benefit. But I think it goes for me, it goes wider than that. 66% of the UK workforce relies on some form of credit between pay cycles, but we also know that 75% of mental health related work issues are ingrained in financial wellness. So if we can help remove some of those, those pressures that people are feeling, when there's enough pressures around us, I think it's, it's an incredible um, solution to be able to offer our workforces, to be able to offer employees and to reduce some of that stress that comes with it. So with those sort of stats in mind, what's the response been like from the customer side for your customers? And, and what are the expectations down the road? So there's definitely a retention benefit that customers see. And I think that will increase over time as well. I, I think, as I said before, the analogy is going to be the traditional VHS video store versus Netflix. You know, you have the rise of the work and they're going to just simply elect to work for organizations where they can get paid immediately. In terms of success stories, we've seen some wonderful emails from uh, employees who are using the Dayforce wallet where they talk about the value that it's made to them, the benefit that they've received. And I, I've seen everything from things like a water heater uh, blowing up and not having enough funds to pay for a new one. And instead of having to put it onto their credit card, which is already maxed out and paying the exorbitant fees that are attached to that, the ability to use the Dayforce wallet to get the money that's really owed to them to pay for the new boiler. And, and how that made a big impact. I've seen emails from people about going to the uh, doctor and being able to really afford the medical treatment, whether it be something like a, 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 a an item that's not covered by health insurance or whether it is going to the dentist and having to pay out-of-pocket fees for that and being able to use the wallet from that perspective. Sure. Uh, during COVID, as you know, it became a lot more difficult for people 
Uh, a lot of people saw their gross wages go down or impacted. And so the ability to get more fluid or continual income made a very, very big difference in people. So the, the benefits of the people, I think, are quite high. Uh, there are a few other uh, patterns of behavior. Uh, we know that people spend about 40% of their pay slip within 48 hours of receiving it. And a lot of that spend is uh, kind of what I'd call discretionary. And when people get paid on a continual basis, you typically don't see that behavior. So what that means is that the same wage goes a lot further when you have content, when you're paid continuously. Sure. Now, when we talk about financial wellness, it doesn't just end with the ability to get paid immediately, but we can start to use the data and add a little bit of intelligence to it to help people. So for example, moving into the area of bill, bill pay now, and bill pay is more than just registering the different bills that you'd like to pay, but we can help the person with bill pay strategies. So for example, if I don't have enough wages coming in to cover all my bills, should I pay the minimum amount on each of them so I avoid the very expensive fees? And then what's my strategy to prioritize the payment of the others? And even tell me how many hours am I short? And can you help me find additional hours to work so that I can cover the bills? Uh, you can go into various types of saving strategies where you can create saving buckets. And depending on what your goal is, whether it be a holiday saving bucket or an educational savings bucket or a retirement bucket, you can set particular targets and kind of see uh, kind of confetti and success when you reach it. Uh, you can have a trickle-based saving program. So every time you do a purchase, round it up uh, to the nearest pound or dollar so that over time you start to accumulate. You can do uh, a good in the world by doing something from charity giving, round it up by a few cents each time I do a purchase and put that into a particular charity of my choice. So there's a lot you can do on financial wellness to help people really uh, save money and reach the goals that they're looking for. I think you're absolutely right. And there's one element that had never occurred to me before this pandemic, but quite recently, I thought this really brought it into, into my consciousness as a benefit, as a recruiter, was when we had a short-term temporary assignment, which we had a candidate for, they were very keen, we felt they were, they were well suited and skilled for the role, but they couldn't afford the train fare to get to the assignment. They had the money coming, but the money was coming at the end of the month. So they could go, but they would have to wait till the end of the month to get paid in order to take the assignment, which would have given them two weeks work before payday and we ended up as a recruitment agency trying to find a solution well it's thinking it's crazy you've earned the money but you've got to wait two weeks to get that money to make an interview for in order for you to make additional sums in what is a really challenging time and that was one of the first times as a recruiter it actually affected us. We were like, well, that, that seems, it seems crazy. You know, go and speak to your employer, see if they can give you an advance on your pay so you can make this interview because you're just throwing away two weeks worth of money because you can't afford the train fare. And I think this is where it really, really, that really brought it to life for me. So you're right. Uh, you know, if I look at various types of surge indus uh, industries during the uh, COVID time, uh, things like uh, work at retirement homes, various types of healthcare service providers, that industry typically is shift work based, where people work across different location and they rely on the movement across location to basically build up their income. And in order to limit the spread of COVID, you've seen a lot of these organizations preventing that. They don't want people kind of working outside of a particular location. And so the ability to pick up additional shifts and to get paid immediately is now a requirement because the limitation of moving across location really has impacted their gross earnings. Now, where we're actually going with the product, and you'll see a bit of this in 2021, is that if you're a Dayforce wallet holder, next year you'll be able to go to any workplace. And without being onboarded or offboarded at that workplace, you'll be able to work a shift, so a set of hours, and when you complete that set of hours, when the hours are approved, you'll get paid immediately. 
And we can do that because with inside the Dayforce wallet, we'll be able to show the workplace who the individual is uh, to verify that they have the right to work and also uh, to verify that they are a safe person by way of a background check. And when you do that, you now are going to empower people to select where they want to work what they want to do, so what projects they're most interested in actually doing or what assignments they would like to do, and also who they would like to work with. And I believe that's another direction you're going to see in terms of the rise of the actual worker in the future. Sure. Oh, I couldn't agree more. We're seeing that, you know, we obviously do a lot of analysis on trends within the recruitment sector, and we're seeing some of those those changes take place already, and I can't see, can't see that changing. Well, it's quite a deep subject, so we're going to jump to a quick advert break, but stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to find out a little bit more about the future of payroll, and in particular, whether or not we should be excited or anxious about what's to come. So stay tuned. We'll be straight back. Have you ever asked yourself, how can I recruit payroll staff effectively? Please don't give up on your recruitment project just yet. Here at JGA Payroll Recruitment, we appreciate the difficulties associated with attracting, recruiting and retaining top payroll talent. We also understand just how costly a poor payroll hire can be. JGA Recruitment are a niche payroll recruitment agency who will partner with you to resource payroll candidates who will improve both the accuracy and efficiency of your payroll department. Contact us today on 01727 800 377 or visit jgarecruitment.com to find out more. So, David, to follow on from the previous section, I know you've talked a little bit about there about how it could definitely be relevant for the care industries and those shift workers. But what other sectors do you think could really benefit from a pay-on-demand solution? Is it relevant for all sectors, whether you are on a shift-based pattern or a monthly-based pattern? You know, is there anyone that it doesn't work for as well, perhaps? So, uh, what I can do is I can just speak with data. And so, as I mentioned, we launched the product at the very beginning of May of this year. So it's been in market for a few months now. Uh, We're seeing a exceptionally high attachment rate across industry of Dayforce wallet for when people buy the Dayforce HCM system. And as well, when we look at the hundreds of customers who have signed up for Dayforce wallet, we're seeing right across sectors. So whether it be financial services, healthcare, retail, hospitality, manufacturing, uh, logistics, and, and the like. So it seems to be following almost every type of worker right across industry. Okay, no, that's good. That's good. Because I think for me, in my mind, that crystallizes that really we're going to see a real acceleration in growth of these products. I think, you know, as host of this show, I think it's important for me to mention there are obviously other on-demand pay options available in the market. And actually, I remember recording a podcast with the CEO of Wagestream, Peter Griffith, back in April 2019. And we talked then about how pay-on-demand solutions through payroll could help kill the payday loan cycle. But I think it's only really now that I'm really seeing this trend accelerate. And I would love to know what it is that really differentiates the Dayforce wallet product to others that we're seeing in the market. So when we did the analysis of the market, what we found were that there were many apps that were coming to market trying to offer people access to their own wages. But because they didn't do the calculation of the net earnings, they had to really rely on effectively a payday loan to give that type of flexibility to the worker. And what most of the apps do, if not all of them, is they look at your prior earnings and then they make an approximation as to what you're going to make in the current pay period. And then they allow you to access a percentage of their of your expected wages during the current pay cycle. And often they charge you each time you have to load your uh, spending card. When we did it, we didn't want to do that. We uh, wanted to avoid the entire concept of lending to the employee. And we also wanted to make sure that you were doing a fully compliant payroll. In other words, doing the remittances and the money movement in accordance to all the different legislative uh, rules at all the different levels of jurisdiction. And so what we do is we 
always calculate the person's net earnings. And through the app, they can see exactly how much they've earned, all the various deductions and taxes and what their net earnings are. And for that net earning amount at any time, they can then add it to the day force wallet. And when they do that add, we immediately create that pay slip and we do the remittances in accordance with what the jurisdictional requirements. So unlike the others who are doing this estimation and payday loan type of construct with uh, fees, direct fees to the employee, we calculate the net earnings which is owed to the employee and we allow them to access their earned wages and because they are accessing their earned wages with a fully compliant payroll, we avoid all types of payday lending that the others have to uh, get through. I think that is a critical distinction that I know my payroll listeners, certainly in the UK, would love to have just, you know, rewind that section again and re-listen to it if you're still not sure, because I know the biggest question we get is, well, you know, how do we produce another payslip? What about the compliance aspects? Is it a loan? I think you've covered all of those questions very eloquently, David, so I appreciate that. And I certainly have seen lots of other solutions in the market, but I haven't seen one like Dayforce Wallet that does calculate it and, and offer this service in the way that you just described. So I think that's fantastic. Yeah, as I kind of, you know, would mention, it comes from Dayforce, right? When we, we, we didn't decide to build the Dayforce Wallet and on-demand pay kind of on the spur of the moment. When we looked at the market back in 2010 and we noticed that separation of data and the batch-based processing that was happening in payroll, And that batch-based processing wasn't only limited to the payroll administrators, but it also was to the employees. Employees got paid in batches based on pay period. And so we set out to solve that. And it's not an overnight uh, uh, kind of, hey, let's do it overnight. We first had to build out the day four system, which, as you know, is one system across the entire spectrum of HCM, human capital management, and build out that continuous pay engine with inside the Dayforce product. And now what we're doing with the Dayforce wallet is we're leveraging that continuous calculation that handles all of these very complex and very dynamic payrolls and taxation rules and pension rules that are in market and are always changing. And and that's a very, very difficult thing to do. And so I suspect that Dayforce and Dayforce Wallet will have a significant advantage in market for a very long time because the other vendors still have to build out the combination of time and pay in that single rule engine. They have to work out how to actually do the taxation. So it's not just calculating your gross wages and doing the deductions, but you have to work out how taxation works and uh, what taxes have to be applied based on the work assignments of the individual. And then there's the entire money movement and trust operations that has to be set up as well, uh, which is also quite a a considerable amount of effort. Sure. Before we open the vault, going back to the future of payroll, it appears to me that technology is evolving so fast, faster arguably than ever before, that we're hearing noises now about blockchain. We're hearing noises about potentially paying people in cryptocurrencies in the future. Uh, We've got AI and robotic uh, robotic process automation where every payroll manager seems to be wanting to to, to implement new automation-based solutions, I guess, that, that, that improve and streamline the payroll process. However, what I'd love to know from your perspective, as someone who's right at the cutting edge of technology, what do you think the future of payroll looks like away from pay on demand, from a more technology perspective? And do you think payroll professionals should be excited about the changes that are to come? Or should they be anxious about it? Should we embrace it? You know, if you're a payroll manager now, David, how would you be thinking about the future of the market? And, and, and what kind of mentality should they be adopting? So what we're seeing is we're seeing a shift from what I would call automation to intelligence inside the market. And uh, historically, payroll individuals were so busy getting through this kind of archaic batch-based payroll process every single month. And as you know, the separation of data meant that some of the movement of the information was done done with what I call a bums in seats approach versus having a reliable interface moving across. It meant that the people were really focused on just getting payout. What we're now seeing is payroll in itself is one of the 
richest sets of data about your workforce. And your workforce is most likely your biggest expenditure of your organization. Probably about 70% of your company's expenditures is through payroll. And you're now able to leverage a lot of this predict predictive technology, so whether it be ML or AI, to really gain true insight into your workforce that can be used to analyze how well your company is doing and to get ahead of any potential challenges that your organizations are going through. So, for example, if you look at overtime that's been worked, usually that's tied to some workflow process in production. Uh, it might be a quality issue that's happening regarding your particular products and services. Uh, if you're a retailer and overtime has been worked, it might mean that you have a surge in sales. And if you can get real-time live information about this, you can start to analyze and act on that data very, very quickly. And so you're seeing the shift of payroll people from being really workflow people doing the data entry and the correction to really becoming much more strategic in organizations where they can create a tremendous amount of value to the companies that they work for. Well, that's music to my ears. It's a drum I've been banging for some time because I think this is where the future lies. I think it's an opportunity for payroll professionals to make payroll profitable by using the data, which is now considered arguably the most valuable commodity in the world, which is data. So using that data to their fingertips, using it wisely to really help organisations to reach their organisational objectives. So really, really glad I asked the question. So we're going to quickly open the vault. I'm conscious of time for yourself, David. Entering the vault. So these are short, sharp answers to some very quick questions, if we may. One piece of advice you would give to someone working in payroll right now? Well, I would try and lift up my skill sets when it comes to data analytics and becoming quite familiar with some of the new predictive technologies that are outside there. I think if you do that, you become, as I said, very strategic to an organization. And if you can leverage the data that's contained in your payroll systems, you'll become a superstar in the organization. Completely agree. If you had the power of foresight and you could change the entire payroll industry with one action or improvement, what would that action or improvement be? Well, I think that I would eliminate the concept of a pay cycle. I, I, I don't think it's required anymore. And in most other aspects of business in our personal lives, we've seen tremendous value creation by shortening cycles or eliminating batches altogether. And so I think the same value can be created by the elimination of the pay cycle. Excellent. In hindsight, what's the one thing you know now that you wish you had known when you began your, your payroll and HCM technological career? So I speak about this a lot. Um, it's taken me about 30 years to realize this. When you go out to solve a problem, don't choose the most complicated problem you can find. Rather, what you want to do is you want to find the biggest problem that you can solve and solve it as simply as possible so that it applies to the most amount of people. And if you do that, you can create an enterprise that has true scale. Amazing. And my last question in the vault, David, which I know my listeners will want to hear, as someone as successful as you have been in your career and your success that you've, you've, you've garnered through the multiple awards that you've won and the growth we've seen at Ceridian, I'm quite excited to ask you this final question because I've been told that, like me, you're a bit of a, an avid cyclist. I know that there's a, a picture on your, on your mantelpiece of a, of a cyclist there in racing gear as well. So what I'd like to know is how does someone with your success, how do they relax? You know, how do you relax in your downtime? And is cycling a good escape for your creative thinking? So, look, I, I think all of us have to prioritize. And that prioritization changes by your stage of life. For me, I think it's very important for not only me, but uh, everyone in our organization to get a true work-life balance. And work-life balance means that you're prioritizing family and health more so than you're doing work. And the workplace has to really 
change in order to give you that flexibility to ensure that you're taking care of those that you love and yourself properly. For me, my priorities obviously would be a, a family, health and health for me. I, I kind of, as you know, I, I cycle a lot. In fact, I think this month I'm going to pass 500 hours on a bike since the beginning of COVID. Wow. Which if you're, right. if you're a cyclist, that's a lot of cycling. And then obviously I, I prior, prioritize work. And I think we all can do all three. I think we can really focus on family and friends. We can make sure that we're healthy. And at the same time, we can be very productive. And I would argue the more that you focus on the first two, the more productive you get at work. Listen, I think that is a fantastic way to round off what has been a very educational, insightful and exciting for me podcast. So thank you, David Ossip, so much for joining me today. Of course, Chairman and CEO of Ceridian HCM Holdings. It's been an absolute pleasure. I will, of course, put links to uh, some of the Ceridian sites. So for those of you who are interested in finding out more about the Dayforce product, I advise you all go to ceridian.com. But I will also put some additional links in the show notes as well. So please do check those out. If you have any questions, I will also add David Ossip LinkedIn profile. By all means, reach out to David directly if you have some particular questions you'd like to ask about the Dayforce uh, product in particular. And please remember, if you do have a payroll-related vacancy that you would like some specialist payroll recruitment support with, I've been doing this now for over or nearly 20 years, and I would love to support you. So please do reach out to me directly at nick at jgarecruitment.com or give me a call 01727 800 377. It just leaves me to say a huge thank you, David, for joining me today on the payroll podcast. Nick, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, have an amazing day. You too. You too. Thank you so much and look after yourselves and each other. I'll bring you another episode of the Peril Podcast real soon. Thank you so much for tuning into the Payroll Podcast with Nick Day of JGA Recruitment. If you need help with a current payroll vacancy, then please get in touch with Nick and his team. All contact details can be found in the episode notes. In the meantime, to make sure you never miss a future episode, please subscribe to the show through any of your favorite podcast channels. Till next time.